skill that can be acquired if you have a strong will. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a man endowed with rich experience and in-depth knowledge who hails from the land of pyramids and the river Nile, the cradle of one of the world's ancient civilizations. His interpretation skill and his views on its present and future will be of great advantage to students and teachers of translation. Our guest speaker is one of its teachers at the Manufia University, Jamiat al Manufia in Egypt since 2015. Dr. Ahmed has MA and PhD degrees in applied linguistics. He has experience in teaching in the United States of America in a number of universities over there. And he also worked in Turkey as a professional interpreter. In addition to that, he also worked as TV presenter on certain TV channels. In addition to that, he participated in different international conferences in the US. <laughs> Dr. Ahmed was also a guest speaker in different academic institutions inside and outside Egypt. He has our guest speaker today on this, in this session has published books in both Arabic and English. Well, ladies and gentlemen, his talk will take about 20 to 25 minutes to be followed by a question and answer session. Let's welcome Dr. Ahmed Abdul Tawab Sharafuddin for his plenary talk. Dr. Ahmed, please. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, deeply, I deeply appreciate your uh, presentation and your introduction to me. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that my voice, my voice, uh, hold on. Hello, Dr. Ahmed. Hello. Yes. Yes, I can hear you now. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes, yes, you can hear me. All right. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for introducing me today. It's a great, great honor to talk to all of you today. I'm talking to you with my students, and I'm very excited to have such unusual experience. This time, I am also inviting my students, and they are surrounding me now. Um, I just wanted to make sure that my voice is clear for everyone. Um, today, our topic is, I would like today to talk about um, uh, interpretation and interpreting um, in the past, um, in the present, and in the future. In the past, in the present, in the future, all right? Um, um, I just wanted also to share um, this presentation with all of you. So I just wanted to make sure that you can just see my slides. Can, can you see it? Can you see the slides? Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, is my voice clear for everyone, guys? Yes, yes. Hello? Sure. sure. Why is this clear, okay. Doctor? So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk shortly about the topic that I have today. Um, so when we talk about interpreting, we have to understand that interpreting and interpretation has a historical dimension and a historical background. It dates back. It goes back to the 300,000 years 
uh, BC. And um, at that time, um, interpreting was used just for trade and it was used just for communication. And one of the things, one of the interesting points that I found that is um, in ancient Egyptians, they were probably the beginners of using that strategy and that style of translation and interpreting. However, um, unfortunately, um, there, are, there are insufficient sources to gain a, de a de detailed information regarding the style and the nature of interpreting at that time. Um, and I'm, 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 just, I'm just talking slowly as I have my students with me today. And I just wanted to make sure that my voice is delivered accurately and clearly. All right. Now, let me just go to another part that I have here. Um, so we're going to move now from the time, from the stage of the ancient Egyptian era or time, and we would like to move to another era or another time that is the late and the high middle ages um, that was during the medieval ages. Uh, and at that time, um, interpreting also um, was very clear. At that time, Crusades, um, at that time, they were in the Middle East and um, interpreting and interpreters, they were doing something, um, that they were doing something um, um, great in conveying information and in delivering the message. And now um, I want to move to another different part um, during, so um, we are talking about the historical background. Here we are talking about um, something related to interpreting and the translation in the past. Um, believe it or not, even in Europe at that time, during the time of the medieval ages, there were exchanging, exchanging delegations coming from um, the Arab to the Arab side, and that required also interpretation and interpreting at that time. Um, during the month, um, interpreting played an important role. We all remember what happened during the Second World War and the First World War. Um, um, at that time, at that time, um, an essential and the necessary necessary need for interpreters in Sorry order to, to interrupt, Dr. Ahmed. We are not able yes. to see your PPT. I would like. Okay, uh, let me just share the slides now. Here, Can you see it now. Now I shared it already. Uh, okay, can so you just... Thank you. Now we are talking about the modern age. We are talking about that during that time. Uh, we are talking about what's happening today. Today we have that sense of technology. So it's different from the past. When we talk about um, interpreting today in our current times, we are talking about equipment, we are talking about tools, we are talking about, let me share here something. Like, for example, we are talking about uh, and the technical and uh, the facilities that we probably can have today. For interpreting today, we probably can use the headset, we use the microphone, we use the internet as well. Um, and as you can see here in the photo here, I was just trying to um, 
make sure that all the equipments, uh, all the equipment um, and all the tools are working perfectly. Um, now, when we just go to the future, the future of interpreting, so in the past, in the present, in the future. The future of interpreting is something that is fascinating as well, but there is a very critical point that we probably need to rethink about it, which is um, um, technology probably will replace the human beings. So as we can just as we can just see that technology today replaced some other different jobs. So there is a skepticism today and there are a lot of doubts, a lot of doubts that uh, technology probably can also replace um, the, the profession of the profession and the job of interpreters. Um, so there is also something very important to consider here regarding the situation of interpreting, that is the soft skills for the interpreter, the soft skills of the interpreter. So this is very important as well. Um, in the future, what we're gonna see in the future is um, the question, and that is probably could be the last point that I have today here. This is a question that I would like to raise is it true that translators and interpreters could uh, probably well disappear in the future and the machine translation and the machines will be doing the same job as a translation that we I think that this is the question that we are trying to answer today. To what extent machines and the electronic tools and technology probably could replace uh, the job and the performance of the interpreters. I think now I got the end of my presentation, Dr. Abdullah. So thank you very much for having me today. I appreciate that and I will be ready for any kind of questions or any feedback or any inquiry. I will be very, very happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nathan. Uh, but I think you are, uh, I think you took less than what you were allowed to. You could speak until uh, 20, 25 minutes. You take less than 10 minutes, I, am, I guess, or I'm sure. So if you would love to add something more, please go ahead. Sure. Um, one of the things that I would like to add, and I'm sorry because I have, as I explained that to, um, to Dr. Isa, one of the things that I would like to have in my um, talk today, it is the different types of interpreting. We have different types of simultaneous interpreting. We have something which is called at site interpreting. We have something which is called consecutive interpreting and we have the simultaneous interpreting as well. Um, and I think that when it comes to the challenges, one of the things that I have in my mind is the challenges that could surround um, the, the, the concept of interpreting nowadays in our current times. Um, as I said, there are high level of challenges and we would like to understand deeply how to deal with such a challenges and how to understand and how to grapple with the situation regarding the technological uh, devices that we have nowadays. I just read a few days ago, I read a few days ago, that is uh, major companies like Google, they decided to manufacture um, uh, devices that can replace the human beings for translation. And here, when I talk today, for example, let me show you that I have my, 
my cell phone and I use my cell phone today um, regarding any process of communicating with different languages. So I think that um, the challenge that we have is machines probably could uh, play an important role and there is also something very important that I would like to add which is the artificial intelligence the artificial intelligence as the al istanai and that probably also can play an important role for understanding um, the current situation and what we can see in the future so this is something uh, very very important to consider in our minds um, in the past we were talking about that translation and interpreting um, have a number of skills, soft skills, um, something that goes beyond the linguistic entities. And nowadays, we are talking about some other technological and advanced skills as well, something like um, the devices, the internet, the artificial intelligence. Um, and so the question that I would like to raise today is to what extent uh, people will be able to stand in front of such technological challenges when it comes to um, interpretation and interpreting. There is a very, very wide gap between the past, between the present, and what we can really see in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the insights you have put to the audience and I I think we can allow a few minutes for the audience to raise any questions or any, if they need any clarification on your talk. Please. Any questions? Any question from the audience, please? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, go ahead, please. First, to thank Mr. Ahmed for this wonderful, Dr. Ahmed, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, and, and speaking about machine human replacement in terms of translation, uh, this is like a big topic to talk about, but I want him to elaborate in one or two minutes about his opinion and why uh, is he more into thinking that uh, machine can replace humans with the language changing with time, like culture change uh, changes. And then with that change, language itself changes with the terms, with the terminologies and with the vocabs and everything. So machine, uh, I, I don't know, but I, I am, more into machine cannot replace translators. I want him to elaborate in one minute or two minutes about his opinion and why does he think so? Sure. Um, so your question again, let me repeat that question again because I'm standing, I'm sitting now with my students in the college and they are following me. So I like to repeat the question again to all of them. So your question is to what extent machine translation could replace the human factor or the human element, especially when it comes to some other points like the cultural backgrounds, the social backgrounds, and all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, well, I think uh, uh, if I may ask a question, could you tell me uh, what's your name, sir, please? Uh, my name is Ahmad, and I have been working as a translator for the last 10 years. Uh, I am now a faculty member at the Mar University, uh, one of the central universities in Yemen, and I am doing my PhD in literature right now. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmed, inshallah. Thank you very much for your insightful question. I think back again, back again to your question, I think I think that machine translation um, is making a huge, huge progress. Progress and advancement. Can you hear me? 
Hello? Yes, please. Please continue, Dr. Ahmed. All right. So back again to your question, I think that machine translation is currently making a huge progress, huge progress regarding the development of the technicalities of translation. There is an issue which is something related to understanding the cultural, the cultural background and something that goes beyond the surface structure and the explicit meanings of words. So I think here in this way, um, um, if we just add the artificial intelligence, the artificial intelligence to the process of the machine translation, we can see um, how important it is the machine translation. Remember, Dr. Ahmed, that in the past 10 years, um, machine translation was not making something good for translation and interpreting. Today, there is a huge progress happening. And that is why I have uh, doubts, um, I have skepticism that one day uh, probably translators and interpreters could disappear. Yeah. Back again to you, Mr. Abdullah. Dr. Abdullah. Can I ask? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Please. Is my voice audible? Yeah. To all? Uh, thank you, Dr. Ahmed uh, from Jamaat Al Manufiya, for uh, this flicker uh, concerning will translators uh, disappear one day. Um, actually, I'm pleased to have you uh, with us in, in this webinar, um, knowing that Dr. Mohammed uh, Anani and his uh, student here with us in Jamaat Taiba, Dr. Mohammed Fawzi Al Ghazi. Uh, uh, sharing his own point of view concerning um, whether translation uh, um, aided uh, machine will help or is it uh, human uh, machines will replace humans in the future. Uh, I'm, I'm skeptical mm -hmm. about the issue, especially when it relates to literary translation as uh, literature is um, it's a meta language it's a language oh. that uh, uh, requires um, uh, super cognition uh, talent uh, musicality will the machine cope with these uh, issues dr mm -hmm. ahmed uh, I'm, I'm sorry could you please repeat yes. your question again? Uh, will will machine uh, replacing uh, literary translation one day do you think machine will replace a little um, translation? I, 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 think, I think it will be, uh, hold on please, hold on for a second. Can you, Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes, I don't have to Please. Okay, guys. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, go ahead, Dr. Ahmed, yes. Uh, yes, um, uh, again, back again to your question, uh, Dr. Hana, and uh, I'm sorry to repeat the question again, because I, I'm sitting now in front of my students. I have more than 65 students um, sitting in front of me now, and they are watching everything and we are so much excited to bring my can students. We say, can we say hi to your class, Dr. Ahmed? Very uh, this is Dr. Naima al Ghamdi from Jamaat Imam Abdurrahman Faisal saying hi to my uh, friends. Dr. Naima. We are having bits and pieces. Dr. Muhammad Fawzi al Ghazi here with us in Jamaat uh, Taiba. Uh, I have been in contact with Dr. Muhammad Anani. I have visited him in his uh, flat in, uh, uh, in his um, modest flat and sit with him for days. Uh, thank you for having this wonderful professor and for the chance uh, that this global webinar uh, open us, uh, open the gate for uh, people to communicate and exchange emails. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me request the chair of the session, please. I want to presentation. 
Dr. Ahmed, uh, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm going to go now uh, and answer shortly your question, Dr. Naima, and thank you very much for your question, which probably if we have enough time, uh, it, it's going to take like a lot of, a lot of hours to talk about this. But let me tell you something in a nutshell, let me tell you something in a nutshell, in a nutshell, in a nutshell. Let me tell you something in a very, very uh, short term. Short is, term. Machine translation may not be able to replace any sort of literary uh, translation. Literary translation is not just a usual translation, but it's something that goes beyond. Uh, the usual translation, it goes into the imagination, the way of thinking, the different meanings that we have, the different levels that we have. So I think that it's going to be very challenging and very tough to imagine that machine translation could replace um, any sort of the human factor when it comes to the literary translation, al tarjama al adabiya, al adabiya. Right. Let me request the chair to move on to presentations. Thank you right. very much. Thank, Thank you, you. Very much, Ahmed Abdul Tawar. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. And I wish I could continue with you because I'm going to continue now my lecture with my students. Please. But I'm very, very excited to have such a wonderful experience. I have now about 70 students. They are smiling, they are happy, they are excited to be participating with their professor in such a global electronic forum. Thank you very much for having all of us today. It is our honor to receive you today and to listen to your talk. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask our